Hello everybody, this is a special video I'm making because I got a question from a viewer, uh, Tom from Nottingham, England. Hey, fantastic. Uh, wanted to know about the subgroups of the 2x2 two two matrices over the complex numbers, specifically subgroups of a subgroup. Uh, so H here is a subgroup of M2 of C consisting of these eight elements. And before we get into the uh, specific questions that Tom was looking at, he asked one more overarching question, which was, for a subgroup of a group, can there be multiple subgroups of the same order? And and that is going to be relevant here. Uh, as you can see in part B, there's a question about finding all the subgroups of H. And what we're going to see here is that there's actually three different subgroups that all have order four. So the answer to your first question, Tom, is yes, absolutely. You can have multiple subgroups of the same order. In fact, very often you can have lots and lots of subgroups of a specific order. Uh, you'll get some theorems uh, throughout your, your group theory course that will occasionally put some restrictions on that. For example, the, the CELO theorems, which will be about subgroups um, of prime power order, uh, specifically ones of maximal prime power order, which isn't going to help you much in this case because the group has order 8, which is 2 cubed. The maximal prime power order is, in fact, 2 cubed. Uh, so that's not going to be useful in this problem, but we won't need it. So uh, let's see. So yes, yeah, so th this is definitely a yes. So let's get to this specific uh, problem. Uh, so one thing that will be helpful here is to compute the orders of the elements. And it's really good, part A is asking you to find all the elements of order two. So I'm just going to write the element orders up above. Uh, so one of uh, these is very easy, the identity element, which is the identity matrix, that has order one. And then this here, this is actually the negative of the identity matrix. Right, and so uh, you know that that if you square it, well, you just square the negative one essentially. So this will have order two, and it's going to turn out that is the only element of order two in H. Um, so if we call this capital I for the identity element, uh, this is just negative I, and squaring negative I, okay, you can see very easily, right? The negatives cancel. I squared is equal to I. Uh, so this is going to actually be the only one. Uh, negative i. Uh, now, why not the other ones? So, uh, well, I'm going to do just a little bit of labeling here. I'm going to call this one j, and this one over here k, and this one over here l. And what you immediately see is that j, if multiplied by negative i, would give you the following matrix, all right? You would just negate every term in here, and look at that. So this is negative j. And same thing here, if I multiply k by negative i, over here I would get negative k. And then over here, if I multiply l by negative i, I would get negative l. All right, so this will this will help keep track of things a little bit. Uh, because I can see if I compute the order of j, then the order of negative j will be the same. All right. Uh, in fact, one of the things Tom pointed out in his emails, he knew all of these subgroups had to have order 1, 2, 4, and 8. And that's, of course, the same is true with the orders. So they all have to be 1, 2, 4, or 8. So uh, you can just manually square j. And if you do, you actually get negative i. All right. So you can check j squared is equal to negative i. So the order is not 2. And in fact, then if I square it again, well, I must get 1, or the identity. So the order of this one is 4. And hence, the order of negative j is 4. And in fact, that's what happens with all the rest of these. k squared is also negative i, and so it has order 4, as does negative k. And l squared is negative i, so it has order 4, and so does negative l. All right, again, you just check you just one of each of these pairs. You square it, you get negative i, right? Easy computation. OK, so this really is the only element of order 2, this negative i. So let's check out next one, find all of the subgroups. Now again, Lagrange's theorem tells us all the subgroups either have order 1, 2, 4, or 8. So let's try to write these all down. Subgroups 1, 2, 4, and 8. Well, if it's order 1, that the only possibility is that you just have the identity element. And if it's order 8, well, then you've got the entire subgroup H. So we're down to 
subgroups of order two and subgroups of order four. Okay, but if you have a subgroup of order two, well, one of the elements has to be the identity, and the other element has to be an element of order two, because the order of any element in a group has to divide the group order, right? So if x is an element of g, then the order of x divides the order of g. So since we know in this case, well, okay, we can write h instead of g, and we know that h has order 8, we know the order of every element has to divide 8, but if you're in a group of order 2, then the it would have to divide 2. Okay, well, there's only one element of order 2, that's negative i. So this is the only subgroup of order 2. All right, what about subgroups of order 4? Well, if I'm going to have a subgroup of order 4, I'm going to need more elements, right? So I know one of them is going to have to be the identity. And maybe I have negative i, maybe I don't. But I'm definitely going to need one of the j, k, or l's. So let me put j in. So if I put j in, well, j has order 4. In fact, that generates a subgroup of order 4. So that would give me j, j squared, which we already know is negative i, and then j cubed which is actually the same thing as negative j. Okay, so I get this one, which is just the subgroup generated by j. And of course, I could get the subgroup generated by k, and I can get the subgroup generated by l. And you can see pretty easily that the subgroup generated by j, which is all these four elements, would actually be the same as the subgroup generated by negative j. And the subgroup generated by k is the same as the subgroup generated by negative k. And the subgroup generated by l is the same as the subgroup generated by negative l. Again, you see it just by, well, start taking powers of negative k. The second power would give you negative i. The third power would give you k itself. Fourth power, you're back to the identity. Okay, but what this shows is that as soon as I put j in, I get four of these elements, and if I put any other element in, I must then, of course, get all the way up to, to 8, so I must be at h already. So if I have j, I can't have any of the k's or the l's. And similarly, if I have the k or the l, I can't have any of the other j's, k's, or, or uh, uh, k's, uh, l's, whatever, like whatever the other missing two are, I can't have those. And those are the only possibilities then, right? As soon as I get any any of these j's or k's or l's, I can't get the other ones. So that's it. I just run out of elements to try. So in fact, these are all the subgroups of H. Okay, final question. Does H have a quotient group that is isomorphic to a cyclic group of order four? Okay, well, let's draw a little picture here of H. So I have H up here at the top, and I know all of the subgroups. So let's see, one of them is the subgroup generated by J. One of them is the subgroup generated by k, and one of them is the subgroup generated by l. Let's get that over here. Okay, now each one of these contains the unique subgroup of order 2. This will be the subgroup generated by negative i. So sitting down the middle, I have the subgroup generated by negative i, and of course inside of that is the identity subgroup. And that's it. Those are all of the subgroups. So if I'm going to get a quotient group of order 4, well, let's put the orders over here, 8, 4, 2, 1, it would have to be h modulo the subgroup generated by negative i. All right, well, a divided by 2 is 4, so that works. Um, now, it says we can assume that each subgroup of h is a normal subgroup. That's actually a true statement. Uh, but... Uh, we could even see that pretty easily here because negative i, well, that's just negative times the identity, right? The identity commutes with everything. Putting a negative, that doesn't change it. So negative i actually commutes with everything in the group. In fact, negative i, this, whoops, this group generated by negative i, is exactly the center of h, right? So it commutes with everything, and so it is normal, for sure. Okay, so this is a normal subgroup of H, so I can definitely look at the quotient. And if I look at the quotient, so pictorially what it's going to look like now, if I do H modulo the subgroup generated by negative I, 
pictorially it has to look like this. So here's the subgroup generated by negative i at the bottom. Okay, and these are all going to be j modulo the subgroup generated by negative i and, and so forth. All right. So um, maybe we'll call this just uh, j bar, right? So then this would be the group generated by k bar and the group generated by l bar. This could be group, this would be h bar. Okay. And what this suggests, this picture should suggest to you is that you do not get a cyclic group. All right. Uh, and the reason why is because in cyclic groups, say of order four, it has to look like this. You only have one subgroup of every given order. So this original question, can there be multiple subgroups of the same order? In general, the answer is yes. For cyclic groups, for cyclic groups, The answer is no, you can't. You're only going to get one of each. So in fact, you're only go you're actually going to get three separate uh, subgroups. And so this is not going to be the cyclic group of order four, but rather the Klein four group, the cyclic group of order two cross the cyclic group of order two. Sometimes this is written as V4. Sometimes this is written as K4. I don't know what notation. Sometimes this is written as z2 cross z2 or z mod 2z cross z mod 2z. Yeah, I don't know, again, what notation you're, you're using in your class. But in any case, it's the Klein 4 group. Now, that's me drawing this with pictures. How would you actually test that? Well, if it's going to be a cyclic group of order 4, then there must be an element of order 4. But what does everything in this h bar look like? So in H bar, okay, you have the identity, right? Which is this negative I. Uh, then you can take something not in the identity, like J times negative I, or K negative I, or L negative I. And you might say, well, what about the negative J? Well, negative J negative I and J negative I, so J negative i and negative j negative i these are actually the same because j negative i means you look at j times everything in this subgroup so that'd be j times i and j times negative i and negative j times this subgroup would be negative j times i and negative j times negative i oh and you can see they're the same okay so these are the four elements i get and if you check any one of these three and we'll just check one of them. What happens if I square it? Well, this would be j squared negative i, but j squared is negative i. And so that just gives me the identity in this quotient group. The same would be true with the k and the l. So in fact, all of these, well, the identity here has order 1, but the rest of these all have order 2. So there is no element of order 4. So it's not the cyclic group of order four. All right, Tom, I, I hope that's helpful. Let me know if I can answer any more questions for you. Have a great day.